Okay, so because I'm not very smart, I forgot to record the audio over the last time I tried this. So I'm going to try again. Um, this is basically just a tutorial, very basic, on how I draw and how I get to my final result. I will go over colouring, shading, line art, just stuff. This is the end result. It's an old drawing I did a while ago, but it's just easier to use something I've already done. So if I just take away all that. Now I use the default brush, which comes with Sai. It should be called brush, unless you're on a different language, in which case I'm not sure what it'd be called. But it's that icon anyway. Um, it's the third brush in the thing. I have it set to this square thing. I'm not really sure what this changes, but it's just it's what I use. I have it set to normal. Um, size, I have it on one and minimum size, which basically means how much the press pressure sensitivity of your tablet will affect the line art. With my line art, I don't use pressure sensitivity anymore, partially because I just don't like how it looks, and also because it's, it's too much pressure and strain on your hand. So if you have like joint problems, or arthritis, or you're just not very like steady-handed, it's I find it helps. It does depend. Uh, have it on density 100, blending 100, dilution 0, persistence 100, and have it set to smoothest. Another thing that helps a lot when you're drawing on site is up here, there's a stabilizer function. Basically, 0 means it's just the normal kind of, like Photoshop, but the stabilizer basically slows down the brush. So depending on what you want to do, or how you draw, or whatever, you want to have it on my I, I have it on 14 and now this can take a bit of getting used to because if you've only ever used Photoshop or another program that doesn't have a stabilizer it will be incredibly slow so that's as fast as it goes if I'm like moving the brush as fast as possible but it does slow down the brush it makes it easier to draw with and it's just generally nicer to use and I literally cannot draw on anything other than side because of it <laughs> Um, so that's the brush setting. Um, you want to, with the line art, if you've got a, a singular line like that, that's fine. If you like tend to kind of scribble and stop and start, you end up with these like overlapping areas where the brush is thicker than other areas. And you can fix this by just like using the eraser tool and just rubbing at it. But it is noticeable no matter what you do. So it's better to just have like do lines in a single stroke instead of stopping and starting. If you're doing fur, instead of going like this, which looks awful because then you get rounded edges and it just it doesn't look right, you would do one stroke, do another. So just kind of, you tend to stop at the point or only do a line for a singular tuft of fur. It just, it gives you more control, it gives you more variety in the things, in the tufts, and then you can just use the eraser and rub out the edges. So then you get like that. So that's how I line up. So basically you do your sketch and then you would go to line up. This is the line up you get. In some areas, like the ear, it's a, it's a thinner brush than the rest of the line up. If you're using Sai, you'll notice that there's 0.7 and 0.8 brushes. 0.7 is the smallest you can go which is um, it, it's it's pretty useful honestly for smaller things but you can use that instead of one but I tend to use one so there is 0.7 next to a 0.1 line and that's what you want so you have your line art, you've gone around, you've smoothed it all out you're happy with it next you want to colour it so with colouring I'm with this tutorial I'm assuming you understand things like clipping groups and magic wand tool but I'll go over them quickly anyway so you want you want to make a new layer under the line art layer it has to be under it, it has to be like don't put it above it or it look awful and um, people that draw over the line art layer are just terrible people so you want to just fill in like choose your colour, just fill in the entire canvas 
You can use the fill tool, but with bigger canvas sizes, it will lag some people. And I've had experiences with larger canvases where it just crashed my um, program. So once you've got everything coloured in, you want to select the magic wand tool, which is over here. It's literally like a magic wand icon. Um, you want to select that. And then you go to your line art layer again, so have that selected. And then you want to click outside of the line art. So here, for instance. And you want to select all the areas that are outside the line art. And then you press to, you press D to delete it or shift, not shift, control X. Um, or you can just rub it out. You can go to the eraser and you can just rub it out manually. But however you do it, just delete the outside colour. So once you've got your colour, you want to go over here where it says preserve opacity and select it. Basically this means that you can't colour outside what's on that layer. So if I was giving the dog some stripes, it would only colour where it's purple. So if I even look at the cursor out here and press it down, it won't go out there. So you can give it stripes, these are really awful, do not do this. Um, and it will just stay inside those margins. So this is the colours that I want for this, this character. And once you've got it all coloured, you're ready to move on to shading. And one thing that people do is they will colour the line art, but I suggest doing this after you've shaded, because otherwise the line art will be too light for what the shading is. Because remember the shading will make areas darker and you don't want the line art to be lighter than the shading. So to make a shading layer, make one, name it shading, have it as a clipping group above the colour layer but below the line art layer because the clipping group basically means it will stay inside the margins of the layer below it. So like the preserve opacity on the colour layer, it will only go where you've coloured. With shading colours, you want to go up here to this sort of area near the top. So it's a very light colour, you can go all the way to the top if you want, it depends on how saturated you want it. If it's here, it will be very purple, if it's here, it won't be as purple. But you want to keep it in the light area, so this kind of quarter of the, the palette. So I'm going to go for that colour for now, you can change it afterwards, which you generally need to do. Um, purple is a good area to start, but if the character is purple you might want to use green or yellow, something you can see, because you're not going to be setting it to the setting yet. So with shading, basically what I do is I will select an area, I'll draw in my shading, because there's going to be two tones of shading, you can quite easily get away with having it as a block colour for this colour for now. And you can change it later. So I'm just going to show you this area for now. But basically what you want to do is take a darker colour of purple, darker shade, and colour again. So while the light purple is the basic shading, this will be the darker areas. And for fur, I kind of do this um, kind of drawing in tufts of fur. can't really explain it. it, it takes some practice, but it can look really nice. And you definitely, for thing, animals with fur, you want to draw in the fur. You don't want to just shade the edges. Um, you want to shade like all of it. But you don't want to shade the entire image because some areas you want to be fluffy. So areas with thicker fur is generally where I'll do this. So like the elbow, the cheek, the chest, the tail, the hair. That's, that's where I'll shade. The neck area generally is where you want to shade. But you can go into more detail, but for this sort of style with the more cartoony 
idea. You don't want to have too much detail. So this is a kind of badly shaded version, but you want to then go over to your mode, layer mode. At the moment it's on normal. So with the shading layer selected, go to mode, set it to multiply. You can use luminosity, shade, lumion shade, overlay. On Photoshop there's soft light, which looks okay, but let's go to overlay, it does not work at all. You want to go over here, you want to set it to multiply. And there, it just makes it a darker tone of the colours below it, which is what you want. And at this stage, I think, well, it doesn't really look right. It doesn't look perfect. So what you want to do is you press Control U, or you can go to Filter, Hue, Saturation. It brings up this window. And you can change the colour by using Hue. So if I want to use blue, I could change it to that. Don't use yellow because it doesn't look right. Don't use green because unless the background's green, it doesn't look right. Um, I'm going to settle with blue. Turn down the saturation a little bit. If you turn it up, it will be more dramatic colour. Which unless you're using, you've got to make a really colourful image, you don't want that. So turn it down a little bit. Luminosity is how bright it is and that will, if you turn it down, it will look grey and you don't want that. So that looks, that looks pretty good. So you save that, and you've got shading. So the finished shading is this. So I've got blues, I've got, so this is it on normal, I've gone with a blue colour. And like here, I've used gradients, and then I've got the combination of the two shades of colour. And again, you, you want to use a colour for the shading, because if you use grey, it will not look nearly as good. Like it looks, it looks all right, but to make the character and the colours really like pop out, you want to use a colour because like purples and reds, and it just it just complements the character. So with that done, you've got the shading. Now you need to colour the line up. So say I was going to colour the hair up here. I'd select this colour. To the colour of the hair. I would then go to the colour palette and make it slightly darker and then I'd come back, go onto the line art layer, preserve opacity like you did with the colour layer and then just start colouring over the line art. And you only want to do this in the area where it's darker so I wouldn't do this colour there for instance. You would not do it there because it doesn't look right. There you would take another colour to make it darker you colour it. And you do this for the whole picture and areas where you say you want it to be white or if you wanted to separate the head from the body sort of thing you would use white and this basically makes it so it stands out on its own. If I zoom out that's what it would look like with the white. Uh, it doesn't really work everywhere, you can do this on a separate layer and then set it to overlay or luminosity and turn down the opacity. It's completely up, your, up to you, you don't have to do it, but it works sometimes. Okay, so this is the drawing with the, color, the, the line art coloured. Instead of using white, like I suggested, I used a really light um, yellow, which looked better, didn't look as harsh. Um, this is the PNG, so it does have my signature over it. Um, and I have also added a gradient to it, which is basically done by you take like a yellow colour, cover about a third of the canvas, take the blur tool, set it to like a very big brush, and just do that. And then I set it to luminosity, turn it down very to like four percent. Um, so that's well done there. I've also added some highlights to the hair and other areas. Um, it's generally nice to have it in the hair because it just makes it look shiny, it makes it look nice. That would, be, would have been done with a separate layer on um, luminosity and set to a low opacity. 